Welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey, here today to talk about what seems uh, almost illogical, but using a graphene-based solution to beat bacteria and viruses. We're here with Zen Graphene Solutions, Greg Fenton and Francis Dubé. Welcome to the show. Morning. Thank you very much for having us. So I read the press release about 14 times, and I'm still astonished by it. Could you take us through the press release and what you think it means? Sure. So, yeah, we've been working with this material for a few months now. We actually patented this, uh, a version of this early in uh, September after work throughout the summer, um, trying to come up with a virucidal coating that we would apply to masks and uh, filter materials for the HVAC sensor. Okay. Like, how, do you, how do you even come up with that idea in the first place? Hey, let's get graphene and we'll use it to fight a virus. <laughs> well, we, uh, you know, it's uh, it's the benefit of having a, a good team and a lot of people that can think outside the box. How do we use this special material to fight a pandemic? And, you know, we fired up our team and uh, got some ideas going. And uh, one thing led to another. And all of a sudden, we're in Mount Sinai and doing some testing that uh, surprised us all, to be honest with you. That's, it's amazing. Greg? We were, we were actually uh, forced to shut down most of our research and development uh, when the pandemic hit. But fortunate for us, we had just opened up our lab in Guelph, Ontario. And we decided when, the, when we started talking to our research partners and they said that they were being shut out of their labs, Francis and I got together and said, well, is there anything that we can do in our facility in Guelph with our limited resources to see if we can help in the, 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 the fight against the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And that's when we started bringing in our, our science team and some of our um, existing research group to see, just kick around ideas. And that's when they started talking about putting various agents on the surface of graphene. Graphene has a very, very large surface area. And we thought maybe there's an opportunity for us to put an antiviral um, active ingredient on the surface of graphene, and that could be potentially turned into a coating that could uh, fight the, uh, the COVID-19 virus. Right, and that's, it, and that's because when you dial down into graphene, it looks like the coastline of Finland with all the fjords. There's a lot of surface area there for something to adhere to. Correct, and, there, and there's different ways to functionalize the surface of graphene, and we've been working with numerous other products, and after collaboration with our research team, it was determined that we might be able to utilize, uh, you know, there's, there's already oxygen on the surface of graphene oxide, but we decided to, to look at putting silver on it as well, because silver has been known for centuries to be very effective against uh, various microbes. So we started that process, and lo and behold, we, we, by the, the end of the summer, we had to optimize the solution and come up with something that was incredibly effective. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Well, it means that we have developed a product and we continue our testing. And that's, you know, a big part of what we released yesterday. After we received the initial testing against uh, the COVID-19 virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, we said, we know now that this is effective against this pathogen. We were pretty confident that it was going to be effective against other pathogens as well, but obviously we needed to prove that up. So we immediately engaged with a couple of uh, different testing uh, facilities, one being McMaster and the other being Mount Sinai, to test it against bacteria and fungi. And that was, were the results that we, uh, we released yesterday, that it was not only was it effective against these pathogens, but what was, I think, really surprising and most surprising to us, and even the, the uh, chief microbiologist that did the work, was the incredibly small amount of material required to be effective against the bacteria, basically stopping the growth and killing the bacteria. It's literally micro amounts and because it's so small, that has significant implications to be brought into the, the medical field as treatments for disease. Right. So it, you could even think of your kitchen. You could somehow interweave the graphene into the kitchen countertop, and then you're providing some layer of protection against bacteria, against salmonella, against food, food substances. 
Correct. This is, and yeah, you're absolutely bang on. The, the, the versatility of this product is way beyond even our own wildest expectations. Um, not only the, the, the range of pathogens that it's effective against, but how it can be deployed and utilized. It's gone from us just looking at it as a coating. We initially did this as a, as a coating for uh, personal protective equipment, but now we're actually talking about bringing it into the human body as a treatment against disease. And this just comes back to graphene being this wonder material. It's carbon at its base, which is inert. And, you know, it's just, uh, it truly is a wonder material and it's going to be revolutionary going forward here. So graphene is basically a diamond that didn't grow up. <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> correct. <laughs> yeah, a flat, very flat diamond. <laughs> and thank goodness it didn't. <laughs> Fantastic, guys. So what's the next step? So we, um, uh, we, we've already begun the process of uh, collaborating with I guess the components of a, a, the optimal solution or the end solution, which would be the delivery uh, into humans. So we've already, uh, believe it or not, started to receive outreach from the medical industry with respect to this. And it's been less than 24 hours since we uh, had our press release, but we're already getting reach outs. We need to collaborate. We need to do uh, initially, we've, we're, we're, uh, we're doing cytotoxicity testing, which is basically testing on lab animals to make sure that it's safe when taken internally. Once we have that testing completed, which should be in, in January at some point, um, then our, our hope would be that we could move to... Sorry, in January? That seems like an accelerated schedule. Usually, don't these things usually take months and years? Well, that's a, that's a great point. Given the early promise that we saw with this, we actually started cytotoxicity testing back in October. So we're already well into that process. We already have received some preliminary results that we haven't disclosed publicly, so we, we won't comment on those right now. But we should have the full uh, spectrum of testing in January. And based on that, we anticipate being able to move, hopefully, to human trials at some point, uh, some point next year. So we are going to look for a, a pharma partner or partners to help us in that process. Um, we, are not, uh, we are not doctors. We, uh, we, we don't know what we don't know, and we're going to work with the groups to help us get it there. But we do, what we do know is that we, got, we, we have a, a compound that's incredibly unique and promising. And I guess you'll need Health Canada approvals. And if you go to the States, you'll need FDA approval. And there's, there's still a process to go through, but you're on the path. We're on that. Absolutely, yeah. And when you look at products that are out there right now, you know, something that's antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal all in one that, you know, could be used as a therapeutic, it doesn't exist right now, right? Fungus, funguses and virals are very tough to kill, um, to deal with. So lots of antibiotics, but even in the antibiotic range, we're starting to see a lot of, and this is not new, but it's getting worse, uh, dr drug resistance, right? These superbugs are getting worse and worse. Hospitals are, they have a big issue with that stuff. So, you know, this is a potentially brand new class of antibiotics, right? So uh, these bugs that have developed resistance wouldn't have resistance to this because this is something completely new. So we might have something there that could be a, a real uh, holy grail for the uh, hospitals dealing with, you know, all these super bugs. Well, I'm looking forward to your next press release. Can we saddle up again when it comes out and catch up? We'd love to. Very, sure. very interesting work. Congratulations, guys. Um, you're making a difference in the world. So thank you. Greg Fenton, Francis Dubay, Zen Graphene Solutions. I'm Peter Clausey signing off from Investor Intel.